uh, I'll give the movie this. It wasn't as bad as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot sequel requel thing or Titanic 666. So it's not the worst horror movie I've seen this year. Uh, Choose or Die is a Netflix original British film that's the bastard love child of Blumhouse's True for Dare and Netflix's own Bandersnatch. And probably a couple of other things from the 1980s. So whatever else it steals from uh, the 1980s uh, is probably the father that abandoned them. This idea isn't terrible once I say it, but regardless, the movie's not good. The movie is about a college dropout named Kayla, uh, played by Isla Evans, trying to support her mother and hopefully one day get out of her good-for-nothing neighborhood. But things don't look so good, but she does have one good friend named Isaac, played by Asa Butterfield. I love this guy's name so much. An aspiring game designer, and while she's at his place one day, she comes across a random old game from, for the PC from the 1980s called Cursor. <laughs> I get it. It's it's a <laughs> okay. I'm done laughing sarcastically. Anyway, she discovers it, and for some reason, thinking if she plays a 1980s video game, the prize money from the contest uh, beating the game would still be offered in the 2020s. Whatever, she's tying on my self plot. So Kale uses an old computer to start up the game, but oh no, the game's cursed. What is the curse exactly? Uh, how do I explain this? So the idea is that the game is alive or something and is aware of the player's surroundings. Types on the screen what the person is doing in real life at the same time and uses that knowledge for them to make one or two choices that affect his or her reality. And if they don't choose, they die. But usually the two choices are those around a player possibly getting themselves killed in the process. So. You know, well, uh, one choice might kill the person uh, near them or might let them live, I think. I, I don't know. I, mean, I think the idea is good, albeit kind of late for it to work today. I mean, if it wanted to be a 1980s video game, why not make it sad in 1980? I think it would help out the whole feeling and tone it wants to be from the 1980s, considering it's a PC game with a cash prize, and the voicemail on the phone that explains the contest is the voice of Robert England as himself. Like, they show a poster at Nightmare on Elm Street at the beginning, and considering what it, this rips off, I mean, Bandersnatch did take place in the 1980s, and is an obvious source of inspiration. If this came out in the 1980s, it'd be a possibly decent slasher film, maybe ahead of its time in some ways, but ideas for this concept where people are forced to make choices and whatever choice they make still can have deadly consequences and Bandersnatch is about a video game programmer from the 1980s who aspires to make a video game that could change his life for the better, but I've seen forces literally force this character to do the things against his will, a metaphor in some ways for a video game character, and I wasn't even the biggest fan of Bandersnatch, but I respect it for what it tried to do, even for me personally if it wasn't that effective, but it did help revitalize, in my opinion, a visual context for choose-your-own-adventure stories. So, you know, that's what Banner Snatch did. Uh, what did this movie accomplish? Um, I don't know. Also, yeah, I haven't seen all of Truth or Dare, but what I do know is that it also feels like the Truth or Dare aspect that, that's all I'm going to say, because like most people, I don't remember that movie well enough. I, I only seen like clips, honestly. I can't even remember if I did watch the whole movie, but uh, moving on. We're talking about Choose or Die, so let's talk about Choose or Die. Point I'm making is that this is just too late to come out for what it wants to be. But regardless of being familiar, similar, or a ripoff, uh, doesn't mean it can't be good, but this movie is lame. It's lame. It's tolerable, but it's not interesting or that entertaining. I wouldn't say it's boring or frustrating to watch, other than one frustrating thing Kale never thinks of, is that all the scenes where the cursed video game avatar thing I don't know, I don't know what even to call it, I don't know, like, living cursed spirit thing, and having different technology around her on screen, so, well, you know, on screens, like a television or a computer monitor or something, so, you know, what I'm thinking is, why not just go to the forest and leave all the technology, you know, like, just not be surrounded by technology, and I don't know if the thing has power still, I don't know, I don't know, I'm so tired and confused and exhausted. It, it's hard to keep my head on straight while talking about garbage movies like this. Okay, ignoring that, what else does this movie offer? Uh, not much. Uh, basically, the concept never feels like it's taken advantage of or done well. Like the opening scene where it tries to set up the tone and at least kind of ties into the plot more so than I thought, but it definitely sets off how pretty mediocre the movie is. Lots of the lines are generic. Like one of the first ones is, uh, You're nothing special. Or another line like, Only those who deserve it. The characters are nothing special. I mean, they're not acting badly, but they are not interesting or interesting enough to stand out. What about the horror aspect? <laughs> okay, enough sarcastic laughing before I get myself a hernia. I'm sorry, it's just, 
it, it's jump scares and stupid death scenes. Like, if the computer can destroy reality, it does the most stupid way it can. Like, a literal choose the red door or the blue door. And even when the two choices she comes across sometimes, it makes no sense where the bad consequences because they are so vague. I have no idea if choosing their option would do anything actually differently. If it were actually like Banner Snatch where the viewer chooses what to do, it, it might be more interesting, but the characters are one dimensional and I do enjoy some things like the friendship chemistry between Kale and Isaac. I hope the actors could have been in a better movie. They, I would believe their friendship in a, in their movie probably if it was a better written movie, but by the end, I mean, you know, with this movie's ending, oh, oh, wow, the ending of this movie. Um, the ending is really confusing because without spoilers, actually, I have no idea what I'm supposed to think because I'm. The ending is really confusing because without spoilers, I have no idea what I'm supposed to think, and I don't mean it as it's left for interpretation. I'm confused what this is supposed to amount to. Like, I have no idea if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, it's portrayed for us as a bad thing that makes no sense for it to even happen, but it's supposed to be meant as a good thing because. Spoilers. Yeah, I'm just gonna say spoilers. I don't know how to explain without spoilers. Basically, um, basically Kayla gets out of the curse because stupid climax, but she sends the stupid curse game to others for no reason. I mean, okay, there's kind of a reason. She doesn't, but she doesn't have to do it, but she's resending the curse. Like, it's not like, oh, she has the curse, so she has to send the others to get rid of it from herself. No, that's not the case. She chooses to do it, but then she gets a call from the mysterious owner who somehow ties into the story in a bigger way, and despite the fact those who suffered to gain something from it, literally, I, 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 don't, I don't know. She says she's going to use it for good because she used it against uh, the jerk guy who owned the place she and her mom lived in. But I'm, I'm so confused what she means by that, because it, it, it makes no sense, like, you're giving people curses, yet you're gaining from it. Like, is, is this a selfless thing? Do you think you're just going to do good? Are you lying? So oh my god, I'm having a headache. <laughs> Sorry, this, this movie was a bit much. But the movie's short, so it's not a slog. There was never a point I was bored, but from the death scenes that are comedically stupid, or the annoying sound editing, but the decent acting and... No, that's it. That, that's it. I, I don't know what else to say. Uh, I don't have anything else to say other than it's not the worst thing I've seen this year. It's just a lame horror film way too long past when it could have been a hit on the shelf. Uh, you know, your local blockbuster or whatever thing I want to say at the end of this because I just want this review to be over. Look, the movie's not the worst thing I've ever seen or anything even close to that. It's just another movie that's very low, but it's not going to be anything significant because it's not low enough. Take that as an insult, I guess. I don't know. I give Choose or Die a 3 out of 10.